NVIDIA today officially announced its long-rumored Super Series refresh for the 40 Series GPUs. We won't waste any time with it, so straight into it. There's the 4070 Super, that is $600. The 4070 Ti Super, that's the actual name, that one is $800. And then the 4080 Super at $1,000. There's some other changes to the lineup too. So the 4080 is going away, they're going to stop making it, and uh, it's being replaced entirely with the 4080 Super. So the most immediately obvious change in price is that 4080 tier, where it's coming down from about $1,200 for the 4080 non-super to $1,000 for the 4080 Super, and uh, in addition to discontinuing the 4080 and replacing it with a full die 4080 Super, NVIDIA is also discontinuing the 4070 Ti. As we understand it, the original 4070 should remain with all of this. So this marks the start of our CES news coverage. There's a ton of news coming up this week. We're going to have separate posts for AMD. One might already be up depending on when the announcements lift. Uh, and then we have a bunch of cases, coolers, all that stuff to talk about. You're going to get a lot of news episodes this week. So make sure you subscribe and check back to keep up with the hardware industry. But let's start with the specs and the breakdown of NVIDIA's pricing. Before that, this video is brought to you by Montech and the K95 Pro case. The K95 Pro is a dual chamber enclosure with configurable options for storage and power supplies. The K95 has a deep 35 millimeter cable channel for management, support for dual power supplies if you want it, which could be useful for a thread ripper system, and ample radiator and fan mounting options scattered around the top, back, bottom, side, and front of the case. The front also can be mesh or solid, with the mesh running a higher porosity for more breathability. Learn more at the link in the description below. It's gonna be a really simple one today. We're just talking prices, specs, and release dates. We'll have benchmarks coming up soon as soon as all these cards uh, come in and start shipping. And this, just as a note, was a pre-brief. So we were briefed before their official keynote. If there's anything extra in the keynote at all, we'll cover it in a separate news roundup. Uh, we are only able to cover, obviously, what they told us in advance, but to our understanding, that's basically everything that's relevant for our audience. So uh, here's a table with some prices that we just pulled from spot checking Newegg and Amazon. The only card that's increased in price in a big way since launch is the 4090, which is $2,200 and up right now. They're all over the place. We've seen them up to like three grand plus, but couldn't find any trustworthy sources at MSRP at the time of writing this. So that $1,600 price is kind of gone right now. The 4080 Super slots in below that in terms of capabilities. The 4080 is currently available for prices similar to its $1,200 launch price, plus or minus a bit. And the 4070 Ti is currently around $770 to $820 plus. Again, remembering that we filmed this piece a few days ahead of announcements in case any of that's changed. The 4070 Super is around MSRP for the 4070, but the 4070 itself is around $550 today. And finally, the 4060 Ti 16GB has also come down by $50 uh, at least. And for relevant AMD alternatives right now around the same price as new cards, checking Newegg and Amazon, the RX 7900 XT is around 780 bucks or so. So that's up from the $720 price we paid a few months ago. And the XTX is about 950, 970, uh, which is fairly close to its original MSRP. So that's kind of the lineup. Now, one of the unfortunate side effects of the 4090 going up in price due to uh, demand for a number of reasons. The main one is that as a workstation card, and an AI or deep learning card, it's become extremely valuable. And, um, and then also the bans in China meant probably there's a lot of inventory shuffling around worldwide. But part of the knock-on effect of that price going up is that there's really no reason for the 4080 to start slipping down because the AIB partners, everyone, retailers that are sitting on the 4080 type cards, other than the Super coming out now, which may be some impetus, well, should be, to, to drop that price. But up until now, what, there's really no reason to drop it because you, your alternative is now $1,000 more instead of $400 more. In terms of release dates, the 4070 Super launches first. That's the $600 card. That launches on January 17th. We should have a review of that pretty close to launch. And then the 4070 Ti Super is next. That's at $800 and on January 24th. And then for the 4080 Super, that one launches on January 31st for $1,000. Now, the good start here is that the prices do appear to be maybe trending downward, so that's great. Uh, one of our concerns hearing the Super Series refresh rumors was that NVIDIA might use it as an opportunity to maintain that $1,200 price for the 4080 class or push it even higher if they wanted to slot something in between the two. Uh, so we're at least glad to see that that didn't materialize and that it's come down instead. Now, whether it's enough to support good value in any of these tiers, we will evaluate in the review. And uh, for now, we'll hold judgment until we can see the performance firsthand. Let's get into the simplified spec sheets from NVIDIA. These are pretty straightforward. Uh, it's what they provided at the time of announcement. 
So here's the new cards. The 4080 Super first uses a full AD103 die. It has 10,240 CUDA cores. That's a bump of 5.3% from the original 9728 CUDA cores of the 4080. The 4080 Super also upgrades the memory to 23 gigabits per second, up from an effective 22.4 gigabits per second of the 4080 non-Super. So it's about a 2.7% increase. And the total graphics power remains the same for the Super and the original 4080. Moving on to the 4070 Ti Super, Nvidia told us that this uses the AD103 die as well from the RTX 4080, but with 8,448 CUDA cores. That's up from 7680 on the 4070 Ti, or obviously down from the 9728 of the original 4080. It sits right between the two, so you can expect it'll likely be between the existing 4080 and the existing 4070 Ti for performance. Really, no surprise there. The name kind of tells us that much. The larger changes to the memory, the 4070 Ti Super will have 16 gigabytes of memory, up from 12 on the 4070 Ti, which as a reminder was originally going to be a, another 4080 SKU. Uh, it also gets a big memory bandwidth bump by moving up to a 256-bit interface from 192. So that's a huge increase in memory bandwidth that will have a theoretically large impact in some applications like higher resolution gaming performance. And the RTX 4070 Super is last respects. This one has a CUDA core count of 7168 up from 5888 on the normal 4070. That's about a 22% increase. Nvidia said the 4070 Super uses a quote nearly perfect AD104 die the perfect version would max out at 7680 cores. And for a really brief explainer on why that's relevant, for those of you who might be uh, new to all of this, so they have different pieces of silicon for each of the GPU SKUs. You'll see when we take them apart in videos, uh, they're different sizes typically, particularly as you go down the stack, they get smaller and smaller. Larger silicon costs a lot more to make. It's not only more material, but it's also much harder to get the yield high. Uh, you have a lot more area and in terms of the fab process, it's more expensive. So when these companies talk about a perfect die, in the case of a GPU, that would mean all of the SMs are there, so every component of the die came out without a defect, at least any meaningful ones that would affect its binning or its skew. Uh, and the defects can be sort of fallout, they drop down to a lower tier. So you might have two GPUs, where one is fully equipped with every SM, every CUDA core, all that stuff, and then you have a cheaper model that has a couple defective SMs or something like that, turns into a different SKU. So that's why that's relevant, and that's why we're talking about the die that is specifically being used here, because when we open them up, uh, you'll be able to see sort of which, which SKUs are, are cut down versus which ones are just a different die altogether. It's a topic for another time, but there's also the option of fusing off intentionally some of the features of a die. So we saw that with the 2060 KO, where NVIDIA specifically tried to cut certain features, turn them off, to sell it as a lower end part because there was so much demand in that part of the market. Uh, you can go look up the 2060 KO review if you want to learn about it. It's actually a really interesting launch. Anyway, the 4070 Super also gets a 20 watt increase in its default power target. This is pretty relevant because uh, it is going to push that power consumption higher and it's probably necessary to get the performance that they want out of it. So it's going to be on a, a slightly lower spot on that volt frequency curve for efficiency, power efficiency, uh, but it boosts the overall total performance. Now, we think the reasoning for this, other than increasing core count and needing a little bit more power for that, plus the maintaining the frequency, but probably part of that reasoning is this is a really competitive spot in the market specifically, and AMD is fighting pretty hard here with 7800 XT, uh, to the extent that they're still around, the 6800 XTs, although they're, they're mostly selling through at this point, and so that's probably part of that as well. So that mostly covers the specs. NVIDIA also provided some first-party performance comparisons, but they were kind of weird mixes of DLSS 3 and 2. Uh, we're going to wait and just run the benchmarks ourselves before talking about performance, so you can check back for our reviews on that. And then speculatively, the 4080 Super is, is probably the most interesting from a, a price standpoint. It's had the biggest change. And the 4070 Super is going to be the most interesting for its larger swing and core count. And then finally, the 4070 Ti Super, Super, Super Ti, Ti, Ti Super. We'll leave that in. Editors, please leave that in to illustrate the problem with the names. The 4070 Ti Super's bandwidth increase is its big change. So each of these three has a different angle that we'll mostly be looking at in the reviews where, where it's uh, value, core count, or bandwidth. We'll have a lot to test and talk about soon. And as far as miscellaneous announcements, NVIDIA should have a lot in its keynote, which will go live by the time this video is going up. Um, most of that's going to be things like AI, automotive, uh, kind of general consumer type stuff. The most relevant to our audience, we thought, was probably the Alienware AW3225QF 4K OLED monitor. So that's a 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.1 millisecond OLED uh, 
display. And they also talked about a new G-Sync feature, which was called Pulsar. So G-Sync Pulsar is meant to reduce motion blur, um, not the kind that you toggle off in a video game, but the kind that's more native to the display. And then the rest of the announcements in our pre-briefing pertain to AI, RTX Remix, which is a modding tool getting uh, a more official launch and availability. And NVIDIA also updated its AI ramen shop owner to have some new conversational uh, dialogue that's AI generated. So we'll save that for another time. But that covers the major news. We're rerunning basically all the, the primary comparison GPUs right now through the testing suite. So we'll have those tested in the benches, check back for the data as the reviews come in, of course, and we'll post them near the launches for each of these. But uh, those are going live sometime in the next month for each one of them. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Let us know what you think of the cards below, and we'll be talking about them soon enough. And as always, you can go to store.gamersaccess.net to support us directly. You can grab this shirt. It's available there now. It's brand new. And actually, we are selling through them really fast. So if you want one of the Disappointment Build 2023 shirts from our Disappointment PC build, where we do the tour dates of all the most disappointing hardware-related events of the year, then go to the store, grab one. That'll help set us up for this year and get you a shirt in return. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.